Hi, I'm Daniel from Tech65, right here at the Shangri-La in Singapore, where Western Digital just announced the WDTV Life Hub Media Center. And it's a very interesting device. There's actually two devices in one. It is a media center as well as a network-attached storage. All right, so I'm just going to take a look at the, uh, explain the features of this device by using the, uh, um, the, the ports that's available right here and hopefully I can show you the user interface which um, they've drastically improved. This is the fourth device, the fourth iteration of a, a media center type of device that Western Digital has attempted to and um, they've drastically changed the user interface but I'll show you that later. Okay, so at the front right here you got the, the, the power switch, alright, and uh, there'll be a Western Digital uh, logo that lights up when this thing is on. Because this is a network attached storage, this is this device is actually meant to be uh, on 24 hours uh, a day. So basically, that's one of the advantages where you can actually turn on the device quite instantly. Right, you got two USB ports, right, one at the front as well as one at the back. And the purpose of the USB port, uh, what it allows you to do is uh, connect uh, things like uh, cameras as well as hard drives to either transfer things inside or to assess the external hard drives and to actually uh, play back the media onto the TV itself. And uh, the other cool feature is that you can actually attach keyboards and uh, hopefully later I can show you what those keyboards, uh, what you can use the keyboard for, uh, in both, um, uh, both wired or wireless keyboards. Okay, at the back right here you got AC. This is an optical audio out, so basically it allows you to give, um, give you a very good uh, uh, high definition audio HDMI 1.4, which is the uh, latest uh, HDMI spec. The second USB port, as I mentioned earlier. This is the Ethernet port, and uh, the Ethernet port uh, basically connects the device to the network. There's no wireless LAN, there's no Wi Fi built in, uh, but according to the press release, you can uh, purchase a dongle, a Wi Fi dongle, and plug it into the device itself. Alright, so here you've got the, uh, your standard uh, uh, video ports. Right, and uh, of course you have the uh, the component video um, at the back as well. So composite as well as component. I forgot which is which, but um, basically they're both there. All right. So as, as far as video ports, audio ports are concerned, they are all um, there. And um, yep. So uh, hopefully later I can tell you a little bit more about the user interface. Um, this thing can actually uh, output a lot of things as a um, you know network attached storage. Right. It outputs uh, as a shared drive. So as long as you're running on Windows or a Mac, you. You can actually assess these shared drives um, from you know your Finder or your Windows Explorer. Um, it also, if you put an iTunes library into the device itself, uh, you can also broadcast an iTunes server, which you can access again through iTunes as long as you're on the same network. And the last one, it, it also broadcasts itself as a DLNA device, means that you can just have one hub. Leave this inside your living room and make this a central place where you store all of your media, your photos, your music as well as your videos. <laughs> and then just leave it in the living room and you can access your media through an Xbox 360, a PS3 or any other DLNA supported device. Um, you know, as long as they're within your same network itself. So that's how it, it acts as a network att uh, attached storage. Um, as a media center, uh, you know, it, it will also accept in, it's also, this is also a DLNA device itself, so basically, let's say you're on a Windows 7 device, you can actually push audio, you can push videos and photos from Windows 7 onto this, this device and it will broadcast onto your TV. It accepts the internet as well, so there's a lot of services and applications which I'll hopefully get to show you, uh, including Facebook, Flickr, as well as YouTube. All right, and of course it can also assess uh, shared drives, uh, just like any other previous Western Digital TV Live um, devices. All right, uh, so that is as much as uh, as far as the features are concerned, and um, we'll show you the user interface uh, in a minute. But before we go to the UI, well, let's show you the remote control. Um, so basically, you navigate it through this uh, this uh, five-way control, just like uh, most uh, remote controls. You have uh, four colors right here, and these are customizable. Basically, you can actually attach fe certain features onto um, these buttons as, uh, through the settings. And um, if you notice, there's a key here that's subtitles. Uh, so this is a great chance for me to tell you all the media formats. Uh, as you know, this kind of devices, this kind of media center type devices, they usually support tons of uh, uh, formats. So if I just take out the press release and I just show you right here, you got everything from XVID, uh, MPEG-4, um, you know, you can take MKV files, which is uh, basically the, um, you know, the raw files from, uh, uh, you know, you can take files from HD cameras as well, and so on and so forth, and it supports subtitle, subtitle files as well, so both SRT as well as SUB files, they are all supported, and um, that's basically what you can actually assess as far as files are concerned on the WD TV live up so we're just going to wait here for um, our chance to take a look at the user interface and we'll just uh, show it to you and by the way just some uh, labels on the device itself to take a look 
So HDMI, you have Adobe Digital as well as 2.0 Digital Out. Okay. All right. So this is the user interface of the WTV Live Hub, and you can see it's very colorful and. Uh, um, it's quite smooth as well uh, compared to uh, uh, some of the other media devices that we've seen so far and even from the previous generations of the uh, WD TV. So like I mentioned again, this is uh, Western Digital's uh, fourth iteration and it's customizable as well. You can actually go into the settings and um, you know change the background and uh, you can also be able to download themes apparently to change the, the buttons and uh, the way it looks like. So. Uh, this is actually a much improvement, and um, so you got your usual stuff. You have videos, music, and photos. All right, uh, and it's all you got a file browser as well. And like I mentioned earlier, you can access files from three different sources: the internal hard drive, which I forgot to mention earlier, is one terabyte. There's one terabyte internal hard drive inside, or you can access it from a, a shared folder, or you can get it from a D any other DLNA device that's within the same network as you. Okay, so this is something that's kind of cool. This is called services. And uh, they're pretty much uh, tiny little applications and uh, uh, which uh, connect to the internet. So you have AccuWeather, which is a, a weather app, all right? Uh, tells you the weather. Um, and also you have uh, Facebook, Flickr, uh, Live365, which is a radio application, and Mediafly, which is a sort of a podcast uh, aggregator. It's kind of a network thing, uh, a network, uh, online network for podcasts. And so you can see right here under the uh, browse plugins, you can see that CNET is here, uh, This Week in Tech is here as well. And um, you know, uh, you, if you have an account, you can probably do a little bit more of a customizing um, uh, to the Mediafly website. All right. Uh, of course, from here as well, some of the channels that they give um, includes uh, CNN. And uh, so let's take a look. You got news, uh, cars, comedy, and so on and so forth. All right. Okay. Pandora, unfortunately, uh, is not available in Singapore. And uh, you have uh, YouTube videos, which allow you to access, um, you know, YouTube videos naturally. All right. So the, the Facebook application allows you to assess uh, your, your Facebook feed, um, you know, photos as well as uh, you know your friends and your wall and videos. But here's another interesting integration way that they've integrated um, Facebook into the the system itself. So you go to photos and uh, just uh, find a picture. All right. The USB sync. So if you take a photo, all right, you can actually go under. Uh, where do I? Oh, I gotta open the, the the photo first, right? And then push up. Oh, options. Okay. So if you go to the photo, you hit the options button. You can see there's an upload to Facebook button, and you can actually upload photos onto Facebook. So as of right now, there's a Facebook integration for this, but the, um, there's no Flickr integration um, just yet. Okay. So, and another interesting feature, they called it the dashboard, which you can assess it from uh, pretty much any of the three, uh, you know, photos, videos, or music. And um, they, they kind of allow you to create playlists or be able to assess some presets, for example, your favorites or, you know, your last uh, 30 days and things like that. So, um, that is the Western Digital Live TV Hub. Right, it's going to be on sale at uh, 319 Singapore dollars for the unit with the one terabyte drive.